glad to have you safe passage. Yes, sir. In the 1760s, a group of intrepid mountain men crossed the Appalachians and settled along the Watauga River on the wild western side of the Great Smoky Mountains. The Carolina should oppose us. In 1772, they established the Watauga Association and declared themselves independent and free from British rule. These men sat down and put on paper the basis of rules that would govern their community. And they were the very first to do so on the American continent, four years before the Declaration of Independence. Very well. Um. The area's British land agent ordered the Watagans to leave. They were squatting on territory that still belonged to the Indians. He was ignored by these so-called over-mountain men, who were safely located hundreds of miles away from the nearest British Army post. When the war broke out with the British in 1776, the hill folk were far removed from the main action and still preoccupied with their own fight against the Indians. In August 1780, the American rebel cause was in its darkest hour. The picture was very grim. The news was bad all throughout the colonies. Victory seemed like a fleeting dream. General Washington himself said, the country stands on the brink of a precipice. The British, after crushing the Continental Army in Charleston, South Carolina, swept north where they met little resistance from crumbling rebel forces. 1,300 Redcoats, commanded by Major Patrick Ferguson, marched inland to wipe out lingering pockets of resistance in the back country. Ferguson sent a threatening message to the over-mountain men. And that message said, if you do not desist your opposition to the British arms, I shall march this army over the mountains, hang your leaders, and lay waste your country with fire and sword. Now that's not the type of message that you could give to people of the temperament who has carved a life for themselves out of this wilderness without them getting upset and taking some action. The call for help went out and a thousand volunteers poured from the hills and mustered at the Watauga settlement of Sycamore Shoals. Once the Militia decided they were going after Ferguson. They let nothing get in their way. And they made a very difficult trip over the mountains. Wearing clothes stitched from animal hides and carrying only their hunting weapons, the over-mountain men raced to confront the British Army. After two weeks of hard march, the mountain men located the British Army, which was camped out on a low ridge called King's Mountain. Ferguson encamped on top of the mountain, apparently thinking that the wooded and rocky sides would provide a natural defense. But of course, <laughs> it worked just the opposite. At three o'clock in the afternoon of October 7th, 900 backwoodsmen silently circled the base of Kings Mountain and then went on the attack. It wasn't organized strategy, but it wasn't a free-for-all either. They understood that Ferguson was on top of the mountain, and they knew what the escape routes were, and they blocked those. But basically, it was, let's surround him and go up the hill. The British were armed with standard-issue smooth-bore muskets, effective only at close range. The outnumbered rebels carried long-barrel hunting rifles, slower to load, but with twice the accuracy. The British troops fired in unison, then marched forward in well-formed ranks with bayonets mounted. Employing these tactics, Major Ferguson inadvertently sealed his own fate. He was used to military tactics 
that were designed for fighting on the open fields of, uh, of Europe and fighting in this Indian style, which is exactly what the Overmountain men were trying to do. This was a guerrilla style of fighting that uh, he was unfamiliar with, and that probably led to his defeat. I got something for you. Just one hour and five minutes after the firing began, the battle was over. The British were decimated. 150 dead, 800 taken prisoner. Only 28 backwoodsmen lost their lives. Before the battle, Major Ferguson had vowed that even God couldn't get him off Kings Mountain. His prophecy proved accurate, but not quite in the way he predicted. He tried to break through Patriot lines on horseback, and when he did, he was spotted. Robert Young, as many men did, had nicknamed his rifle the same nickname he called his wife. He took careful aim at Ferguson and was heard to mutter, we'll see what sweet lips can do. Pulled the trigger, and Ferguson's oath came true. To this day, Ferguson is still on the top of Kings Mountain. Robert Young was my fifth great-grandfather. Against all odds, without any orders or assistance, the ragtag mountaineers had wiped out a well-trained army and stopped the British advance through the Carolinas dead in its tracks. The effect is very much a ripple effect. It simply passed the word around like wildfire. These boys beat them. They didn't just beat them, they whipped them. We can win. One year later, General George Cornwallis surrendered all British forces at Yorktown, Virginia. For the next 100 years, the Appalachian settlements Isolated both by the terrain and a long-standing distrust of outside authority, evolved into a vibrant, self-reliant culture, different in many ways from the rest of the nation. They were an enormously strong culture that was used to resisting pressure from above, which had for centuries never had a compatible relationship with the English crown. Uh, and when you put all those pieces together and you let them grow culturally and otherwise for a couple of generations out in the wilderness, they developed their own sense of America. 